Great and Fanatic here. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Well, I am super excited you decided to click on this video because I cannot wait to reveal how my dining room table makeover came out. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I painted my table, the paint that I used, and also you will not believe what I used to paint my dining room table chairs with and how simple it is to change the fabric on your chairs. So I'm gonna give you a little tour of the dining room afterwards. And then I wanna give you some tips on painting uh, furniture. There are so many different techniques and different paints that you can use that I haven't even done before. So I'm thinking about doing a little project, uh, playing around with some of these techniques. So I wanna share with you guys that. So let's get into this video. Well, I wanted to share with you this dining room table that I'm gonna to paint today. So now that we're all staying home and I figured I needed a project to do. What better uh, project to start would be this dining room table. And then I am gonna change the fabric on the chair. Uh, I can go over to Joanne Fabrics and order online and they do have curved side pickup. So I thought that was pretty great uh, to be able to do that. But I just recently did these curtains here, these drop cloth curtains, and I absolutely love them. So I'm thinking that I need to bring in a little farmhouse into this dining room. And what better way than to paint this table. So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna make some chalk paint because I am gonna use chalk paint on this table. Um, what I like about the chalk paint is there's no prep involved. You don't have to sand, I don't have to prime. Um, I'm gonna make the chalk paint and all I have to do is roll it on. And then what I like about it is I can take 220 grit sandpaper and sand the table to a nice finish, nice smooth finish, and then I'll put a clear coat on it. So let me get my supplies and I'm gonna show you guys how to make some chalk paint. Well, here's a look at the supplies you're gonna to need to make your chalk paint. Now you can find plaster of Paris over at Home Depot or Lowe's. You'll also need some water. And then any latex paint that you wanna use for your project. And I happen to have this little can out in the garage. And this was the color I used in my office. It's called Canvas Tan. So I thought this was a nice color choice to use on the chairs. And I'll also be using this on the dining room table legs. And then a container to mix the paint and the plaster of Paris in. And it calls for a third cup, but I don't have that. So what I'm gonna be doing is five tablespoons and one teaspoon equals a third, and then something to stir your paint with. I won't make it easy for you now. You got two minutes of my time. Slip into your dreams tonight. Oh, so give me, so give me your all. I'll take it, I'll take it to Mars. Oh, I'll stick like glue inside your mind. Just watch me break it. Watch me break Well, 
the next step is I'm gonna work on the chairs and I went ahead and took the cushion off and I got my 220 grit sandpaper out because there were some scratches on the arms. So I thought, well, let me sand those and see what happens. And wouldn't you know, there is some wood underneath there. It was so easy to sand and it is so smooth. So I'm hoping that the top of this table can be easily sanded because I would love to stain the top of this rather than paint it. So I'll let you guys know how it comes along when I get to that next step. Well, I wanted to show you guys an area that I sanded down. It still looks like this hazy top piece right here would still need to be sanded to get down. I don't even know if it's real wood under here. Um, it feels really smooth, but um, you know what? This whole table, it's going to be a nightmare because, again, my husband's saying this little edge here, if I don't take it down all the way to this edge right here, and make it all look the same. When I go to stain it, you'll see this won't look right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm roughing it up right now with the sand sander, and then I'm gonna paint the table. That's the easiest uh, for me to do. Cause a lot of times you can get some really nice solid piece of wood furniture and they're so easy to sand. I mean, it just makes it so simple, but this is not gonna be an easy task. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna rough up the the really shiny surface on the top of my table here and then I'm going to go in the garage and see what kind of paint I have and see what color I want to paint the top but if you are sanding a table you want to make sure that you always go with the grain of the wood when you're sanding if not you'll get scratches in your table or the piece of wood that you're working on so let me I'm going to finish the other side of this table and then I'm going to go find some paint well I want to share with you guys what I'm going to use to paint the top of my table with but this color here is French linen I started to chalk paint it uh, it's by Annie Salone. It's, like I said, it's called French Linen. It's a gray color. So when I brought it into the dining room, it definitely did not go. Of course, I don't have any grays in the room, but I was trying to use some paint that I already had in the house. Um, so when I brought that in there, it did not look good at all. This is too light. It doesn't give me the contrast I was looking for with the legs being a cream color. So I definitely wanted the top to be dark. So the color that I'm using, this is purchased over at Lowe's. This is by Sherwin-Williams. It's a dark chocolate color. It's called Chocolate Velvet. It's dark brown. I haven't used this color before, so hopefully I like it. I've used other browns like espresso colors on other furniture, and I do like the idea of having a dark top with a nice cream legs. So the next thing that you want to do is make sure you have a foam roller because when you're working in a large area like this, you want to make sure you have no roll marks because you definitely want it to look like a nice professional job and there's nothing worse than rolling this and having roll marks when it dries. So what I did was I pulled it apart here where I'd normally put a leaf in and I'm gonna start on this side here first and then I'll work on the other side. So let's get started and hopefully this looks really nice when I'm done. Well, I just put my first coat on and I'm gonna let this dry, but so far so good. I like the color, it looks really nice. I think this will go well with my other wood pieces in the dining room. And as you can see, I love the contrast of it being a dark brown with the cream colored legs. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna come back and give it a second coat. Well, the next step is I'm gonna paint my chairs. So I wanna share with you guys how I'm gonna paint my chairs. And the first thing you wanna have is 220 grit sandpaper. You need something to put down on your grass so you don't get any spray paint on your grass. I'm using some kind of plastic 
a tarp or something here that I don't care if I get paint on it. So you take your cushions off, you bring your chairs outside, and I have my 220 grit sandpaper that we're gonna use to sandpaper the chairs with. This is gonna rough it up so your paint will stick. What I'm using is Krylon Color Max. This is paint and primer in one, and this is an ivory satin color. Now what I'm gonna do is, it's not really that time consuming, because you're just doing it really quick and easy. You just take the 220 grit sandpaper and run it along the chair. And then down here, I noticed I had a little scratch. So if I just sand that back and forth a little bit, it'll come nice and smooth. And then when I spray paint it, you won't even see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sandpaper this chair and then I will take a cloth and I wanna wipe all the dust off and then I'll start spray painting. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let it dry for a couple hours and then I'm gonna come back and give it another coat. Well, now that my chairs are all sanded, we're ready to get all the dust off. Now I have this cloth here, it came from Costco. You can buy a huge pack of these for $14.99. Sometimes they run them on sale. Um, these make great rags for washing your car, even drying your car with these. But I'm gonna use this to get all the dust off. So once we get all the dust off, just go around and make sure that you get all the dust off and then comes the fun part. We get to spray paint them. Well, I went ahead and got a new cloth and I dampened it a little bit. So I'm gonna go back over the chairs and make sure I get all the dust off. And then another thing I did, I took my tarp and I turned it around. I flipped it upside down so there would be no dust on there to get anywhere near the feet when I go to spray it. And then get your can of spray paint. You're gonna shake this up real good for about two minutes. Just shake, shake, shake. And then we're gonna be ready to paint. Another thing I suggest is um, stand back and spray. If you get too close, you're going to get runs in it. So just stand back and you can do short little sprays. Or you can just go over it real lightly and then come back and do it again. But definitely, if you stand too close, you're going to get some drip marks. And then what I like to do is do the top here because when I had my other fabric on there, when the other chair was painted, um, you could see the dark wood under here. So you want to make sure that you paint this part here. Well, I'm getting ready to start the next project of my dining room table. I'm going to be changing the fabric on my chairs. So the first thing you want to do is get a Phillips screwdriver and you want to take the cushions off. So I have already done that. And as you can see, this is the old fabric that I'm going to be changing. Now I've covered these once before. So all you need is a flathead screwdriver. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to take the staples out, which is pretty easy to do, depending on how many staples you put in there. It can be a little time consuming. <clears throat> but make sure you take these and put them in a safe place so nobody steps on these. So I have already taken one off before. So here's what my old cushion looked like that came with the uh, dining room table. So now I have this 
that I'm going to recover. And at first my husband was like, hey, this isn't bad. And I thought, you know what? It doesn't look too bad, but it's a little shiny. And I like the fabric that I bought. So I'm happy with what I picked out. And the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a staple gun and then a pair of scissors to cut your fabric. And two and a half yards will do about six cushions. So that's what I have um, bought. I bought two and a half yards. And I think I'm going to have just a little bit of uh, material left over. I was thinking maybe I'd have enough material left over for a pillow, but I won't. So the next thing is all you have to do is fold this over just enough to cover up the edge. And then you want to do the same so you can cut along here and then down here and on the sides. So I'll cut that and then I'll come back and show you how easy it is to staple the fabric on. Okay, now that I have my fabric all cut, I'm going to show you guys how to use a staple gun, which is super easy. So anyways, what I like to do is just fold it over the top, starting at one end. And the other thing I forgot to mention, that you want to make sure that your fabric that you purchased, if you got a print on there, that it's going in the right direction. And as you can see, when I flip this over and put it on the chair, it'll be going in the right direction. So what I do is make sure your fabric is smoothed out and straight. Fold that over, take your staple gun, and you can put a staple in there. And of course, mine didn't go all the way in, so I'll bang it in there. Then you go down to the other side, the other end. Oh, my dog heard Junior, so he thought somebody was uh, at the door, I guess. So the next thing is, you take it from the bottom of this right here, pull it really, really tight, as tight as you can get it because it'll give it a nice, smooth, professional finish when you're done. So staple that. And then, uh, I guess you could put one over here at the end. Sometimes I like to wait till I get to the corners because the corners are the tricky part. You wanna make sure your corners are smooth and all tucked in. So now what I'll do is pull this fabric over here. And as you can see, I have a lot of extra extra material so if you wanted to you could cut this down a little bit which I'll do so the next thing I'll do is I'll turn this around and I will fold this over and again pull it really tight you can put one in for now I guess put one staple in and then turn it around and I'll do the other side. Again, pulling it nice and tight. And then comes the fun part, comes the part where you gotta do the corners. So again, right here, there's some extra material, which I think I'll snip some of it off. I'll cut some of it, I guess, a little bit off. Um, what I like to do is just start working with it, pull it really tight, and you just got to kind of play around with it. Pull on this side real tight. Sometimes I'll put, you could put another staple in right here, which I could do. And then what I do is I pull the corner right here, and sometimes you can even really kind of twist it and just look at it from the side and make sure it's all folded and tucked really nice. So I can't believe like on that first try that I actually got it on the first one because usually I can spend a lot of time trying to get it nice and tight. And then what you can do is pull that again, sliding out from me, pull that real nice and tight and put another staple in. Actually, I need one right here. And then, as you can see, whoops, I gotta put another 
staple in right here. One in there. And then what I'll do is I'll do all four corners and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights Well, I want to give you guys a look at how the chair turned out uh, with the fabric all finished and really focus on the corners for you. How nice and tucked underneath the corners look. And all I have to do now is just put the screws in and make sure that it's real secure. And I have one more chair to do and then I'll come back and share with you the rest of my makeover. Well, this is one of the first things I did in this room to give it a farmhouse look were these drop cloth curtains. And I absolutely love these curtains hung high. Now, as you can see, these Buffalo check curtains were from Walmart. They come in a two pack for $19.98. And then also from Walmart are these drop cloths. They came in 12 feet and they're around $18 each. And I purchased two of them. And then coming down here to my table, I went over to Lowe's and I'm using the Sherwin Williams. It's in chocolate velvet. It's in a semi-gloss, so I use that for my tabletop, and I probably got about two coats on there. And then my chairs, that is a Krylon spray paint. It's paint and primer in one. I'm using a satin ivory, and I think I used probably about two cans per chair. And I'm using this rooster in this wooden weathered tray, and both of them came from at home. And then towards the back, the little metal candle holder that came from Kirkland's, as well as the gather sign and also this little garden ball. And then I have my Bath and Body Works candle. And I absolutely love the way this centerpiece turned out. It really brings in a lot of farm charm into this room. And then I also have this runner here that came from Walmart. And then towards the back, I took these pillows that came from Walmart. They say gather. I put those on the chairs in the corner. And then this over here, I'm using the home pillow that also came from Walmart. And then towards the back here, from the chair rail down, this used to be a burgundy color, which I will insert a picture. And I painted that Sherwin-Williams canvas tan, so I absolutely love the way this turned out. Another thing that I did to this room was add some new fabric to the chairs. Now, I purchased this fabric over at Joann's, and I bought two and a half yards, and that did all six of my chairs. And I even had fabric left over, so I definitely think that you'd be able to get eight chairs uh, with two and a half yards and the fabric was 54 inches wide. So I wanna share with you guys some other techniques and other things you can do when painting furniture. Well, before I end my video, I wanna give you some different options when it comes to painting furniture for your next project. Now, I chose to do latex paint with a foam roller on the top of this table here. Now, I'm not 100% satisfied because there's some areas that are kind of rough or some lines I can see in this. 
So of course, if you had a paint sprayer and you sprayed the top, it would probably come out really gorgeous and perfect. But I found this stuff that I did a little research and my husband picked this up off of Amazon for $6, it's Flow Troll. And this is over at Home Depot for $18. He got it off Amazon for $6. Now what this does is you add this to your paint. It says it eliminates brush marks and roller marks and it improves the flow and the leveling. So it basically waters down the paint a little bit. I've never used this stuff before. This might be my next best friend. So I'm thinking about taking this and gonna sand it down again, add this to my paint and repaint the top of this. Um, that's one thing I might do, which I'm probably gonna eventually gonna do it. And then the other choices uh, for paint and furniture, there's always chalk paint. I've always used chalk paint. I like it because what the big thing about chalk paint is, you have no prep involved. There's no priming, there's no sanding. You just, no matter what furniture you have to paint, you just start painting. So, and then you can take 220 grit sandpaper and you can sand it and it gives, a, you know, it's chalky, so it's real easy to sand and it comes out really nice and smooth and then you can put a clear coat on there. And then I've never used spray paint. This was the first time doing the chairs with the spray paint. I was really impressed with that. Uh, came out really nice. It's not that hard to sand because you're only lightly sanding and you're just roughing it up a little bit just for, this, for the paint to stick. So I was happy about that because once you let this dry, if you have a drip mark or there's something on here that you don't like, it will easily sand off and then you can respray it again. So I like the choice of spray paint, the chairs, that was easy to do because I was gonna use chalk paint, but I decided, you know what, let me try the spray paint. It'd probably be a lot faster and easier to use. So I was happy about that. And then other things that people do when you paint your furniture, you can use a wax for a sealer to seal your paint from chipping. And, and then once you put the clear coat on, you can also use a dark wax. You can give it an antique look. So I'm thinking about, I might use wax on this and then buy some dark wax and maybe give it an antique look. Then I can use my 220 grit sandpaper and I give it a little distressing. Now what you wanna do is go around the edges where it would normally get wear and take your sandpaper and just go back and forth and give it a little distressing. So you can do as little or as much as you like. So I think I covered uh, a few little options you have when painting furniture. I would suggest just doing a little research and find out what's gonna work for you. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and got some decorating ideas and inspiration. And until next time, happy decorating.